The samurai were the aristocratic warrior class of feudal Japan, often compared to the knights of medieval Europe. The samurai carried the katana, a two-handed single-edged sword with a slightly curved blade. When a new member of Japan's hereditary warrior class was born, a sword was placed in the room. Whether the warrior died on the battlefield, of disease or old age, his sword was near at hand. Dressed in full armor or wearing civilian clothing, the katana was worn at all times. No edged weapon in history has been more closely associated with its owner than the katana and the samurai. As well as a weapon, the katana was a symbol of the samurai's authority and privileged class. The Japanese katana is considered by many to be the finest class of sword ever made. Unlike the spork or Rubik's cube, the katana was not the brainchild of a genius blacksmith or inventor, but developed over many centuries. The earliest predecessor of the katana was the Chokoto straight sword, which were first forged in the 3rd century AD and were heavily influenced by the Chinese and Korean swords of that time in their design and construction. The Chokoto was a one-handed sword that excelled at slashing, chopping, and stabbing. Like later Japanese swords, these early weapons had a single sharp edge. Although double-edged swords did exist, they were less popular. During the 9th century, Japan went through radical changes after the capital city was moved to the north. The land endured a devastating plague, where as much as half the country's population died. And as the power of the emperor eroded, local lords became the de facto independent rulers of their own territory. The lords began to maintain larger and larger private armies of professional soldiers bound in loyalty to them. These were the early samurai. During this time, the Japanese sword went through radical changes as well. The straight one-handed chokoto was widely replaced by the two-handed curved tachi. Typically longer than the katana, it possessed one of the great innovations characteristic of all later great samurai swords. Differential hardening. This technique solved the problem of choosing between a sword that was too hard and brittle, which might cause it to break on the battlefield, or a blade that was too soft and not able to hold a sharp edge very well. Through this complicated process, the sharp cutting side of the blade was made significantly harder than the soft back section of the blade. This produced a sword that had an extremely hard and sharp cutting edge and was able to absorb a large amount of shock, which enabled the bear to efficiently use the flexible yet robust blade offensively as well as defensively. Early versions of this sword had an extreme curve, starting at the hilt. This was made more subtle over the centuries. The evolution from the tachi to the katana was also extremely subtle. The most significant change was not in construction or design, but in the way the katana was worn and used. Instead of being strung from the side of the samurai's belt with a cunning edge facing down like the tachi, the typically shorter katana was simply thrust into the belt with the cutting edge facing up. It is important to note that neither the tachi or katana was the samurai's primary weapon on the battlefield, but rather a backup weapon. The samurai's typical role was that of a mounted archer, or when going into battle on foot, some sort of polearm was used, and the sword was typically used as a weapon of last resort when the samurai had been dismounted or his polearm broken. As you might imagine in these dire circumstances, there is a definite premium on being able to draw your sword quickly and strike. With the tachi, this had to be done in two movements, but with the katana, it could be done in one fluid motion. Some historians have also proposed that with the increased frequency in siege warfare in Japanese history, many samurai found through trial and error the value of using the shorter, quicker katana over the larger tachi when battling in the confined spaces of a castle's corridors. This is evidenced by the large number of tachi that were reduced in size and then used as katana. Both tachi and katana were used contemporaneously for centuries. The tachi stood in vogue until the 15th century and was gradually overtaken by the katana in popularity. As some tachi and katana may appear to be nearly identical, the delineating factor between the two is often considered to be where the maker's signature is placed, which can be seen on opposite sides of the tang of the blade if the handle is removed. In addition to the katana, the samurai also carried another shorter blade, either the shorter straight tanto or the curved wakizashi. Together, the two blade set is called the daisho. Less commonly, some warriors would prefer the much larger nodachi or odachi, which had to be slung over the back. The great sword was not meant for use on horseback or indoors at all. In the hands of a skilled warrior, it was capable of killing a cavalryman and his horse with a single well-placed strike. This has been Epimetheus, and I hope you have enjoyed this brief overview of the samurai sword. A huge thanks to my patrons who make this channel possible. And Lymphamy, 
who I made this video in collaboration with. If you have not already, go check out his fantastic channel covering Japanese history, as well as mythology and folklore, and a whole bunch of other interesting things.